computer. Hi, everyone. Hope you can see us. Hi. Um, Hello. People are asking where you can watch it. Hopefully, people who are asking can see us now. <laughs> Let me just double check that we're actually live. Every single time we go live, we have this thing. Yes, just we're a little comment saying hello. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi in the group if you're watching and um, tell us where you're watching from as well. That'll be fun. So we're going to keep an eye on comments. And as we're talking, if any questions come up about what we're talking about, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, pop them in the comments as well. Um, so Alice, do you want to uh, do a little quick intro about what it's what we're talking about today? <laughs> yeah, so we're just doing a, um, a chat about the, the real life of running a business, really getting started, when you went running, the challenges. And you can ask us anything. And Tina and I run the course and the business documentary. And then Nick and Sarah are two of our alumni from the last run. So you can ask Nick and Sarah anything as well. What was it like doing it? What was their journey like? What challenges did they have? And we'll just have a good chat about it. And um, yeah, we'd love to get your questions in so we can answer those as well. Yeah, I'm just adding a comment um, in the group mm -hmm. to let people know that we yeah. are live. Okay. So we used to, we, we kind of miss our Zooms because one part of the course is we do regular Zooms where we all get together and do Q and A's and share the work and get, we get, we do really hands-on feedback, don't we? And it, this is the first time since the course finished that we've seen you both on Zoom. So it's nice to yeah, see your face. Yeah, too. how are you doing ladies? <laughs> good, really good. I'm missing the Zooms, um, but obviously we've got the group where we all keep in touch. Um, and which is really good so we can ask kind of support each other with what we're doing um but yeah miss the zooms i do too it was nice seeing everybody and chatting <laughs> and just and just not feeling alone in in the world of starting your business but yeah. yes the facebook group is still very nice so mm -hmm. I think that's a really challenging thing when you start a business if, particularly if you've gone from maybe working in an office or if you haven't had a job, if you've just been like in a community, suddenly you're spending you're spending a bit of time with your camera in front of people in families, homes, chatting to them. But the vast majority of the time, and that's something we get into a lot in the course, isn't it? How much of your time you're actually spending alone sitting at your desk. And when you've got things to figure out or problems to solve, that can be really difficult, can't it? So I think learning with other people in a group environment is, um, I always found that one of the best things about doing courses way back. Yeah, yes, and yeah. still to this, I think to this day, I often feel like, oh, I need to chat to you know my buddy if I have a question or have this difficult client that I don't know what to deal with, like, and mm -hmm. who's better to ask than um, you know people you've spent several months learning together with, right? So that know they know what you know <laughs> as well, <laughs> but they I, might be able to offer different perspective. Yeah, I've I've worked for myself for about fifteen years from home. And um, I used to work in agencies a lot, but, but then I, I, I started my own business and worked from home. And yeah, day in, day out, just at your desk. Um, and then recently doing the courses, it's just been really nice to actually um, get advice on, on business and not just have myself or my partner to ask, <laughs> like, what do you think of this? <laughs> You've actually got like that community and uh oh, it's just been so good but I I really don't it doesn't sit well with me to to be at home on my own all day um, well sometimes you're yeah. you're too much in it like in your own head yeah. like mm -hmm. you can't see what's that there's like some phrase like you can't see the trees for the forest or you can't see the forest the for, the trees for the trees, for the trees. <laughs> yeah that sure you knew <laughs> you, meant. you knew what it was you got it yeah <laughs> sometimes you're just too much in it you just can't like see outside of it and it's nice to chat with other people to figure out like what the heck is going on and then just have this like oh yeah duh okay <laughs> <laughs> we'll say that accountability as well like oh yes yeah you guys were so good at that I mean I'm a competitive person <laughs> <laughs> so to know that like oh you know oh shoot that's coming up I really need to finish this like 
branding profile or I need to like figure out my big scary number for finances or whatever. It's like everyone else is going to be doing it. So I have to do it too. I just have to like sit down and do it and figure it out and finally get this done. And then it was really gratifying to have it done. So yeah. Yeah. You, I are, um, you guys are sharing uh, showing us your big folders, weren't you, earlier just before we <laughs> went live. <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> The they are all like model students. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I'm, still, I'm still going through. I do too. I love a bit it's because you know, as we were going through it, there was so much information, and we all, um, every Zoom, we obviously um, came came to the Zoom meeting with where we were up to with that section, which was really good. And um, but then it's, it's you're still working on it all the time, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still rereading, <laughs> going over certain sections as um, as I build everything up. But yeah, so it did much. give you a lot of information. Yeah. So I, we talk a lot about how Alice and I kind of came together and basically brain dumped everything that we knew from like 20 combined years of running a business, a photography business plus like our corporate background all and all that. that yeah but it's not just brain dump it's like it's organized in in neat sections but essentially it's like download our brains <laughs> and then it's, sort of, it's yeah. kind of like you get home from a day in the life with a second shooter and you kind of go okay we've got to turn this into <laughs> like beautiful coherent story and that it we put hours and hours and hours and hours into crafting what we hope is this really nicely structured like modular course that takes you through and holds you by the hand as you build and build and build Thank but this you. would have taken us years to figure out there's oh my there's god so much in there it would have taken us years to figure out and get wrong loads and so much stuff that you just and money <laughs> yeah so much time and so much money making loads of and we all make mistakes anyway but there, there's just so much in there to prepare you for everything um and, and also just pointers like as I went through the course I just make I know you did this as well Sarah <laughs> but you make a list of everything right what do I need to do right I need to get you know my insurance and all the basic things that I just thought pff, you know probably that's just fine you know it made you like tick things off a list whereas if I was just on my own I'd just be like I'd just meander for, mm -hmm. for years on end probably <laughs> but yeah it was it was really good for creating that right what do I need to do and when do I need to do that for and creating your own like little deadlines I think I think like starting the same with you, Nick, I think like starting a business, there's like so many things to do that you just get so overwhelmed and then you just don't do it. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I have to do marketing. I have to figure out how much to price. I have to find people to like even get my portfolio built. I have to figure out like, yeah, the insurance and all that jazz. And then it's like, this is too much. I'm just going to sit in the corner and cry a little bit and not do any of it. <laughs> it well, yeah, it was a bit like that, wasn't it? And I, it was just that whole thing, like, I think it was Alice kept saying, um, done is better than perfect. So yes. I just keep thinking, that just do, like, instead of looking at the whole thing, just do one thing today. Do the, set up the contracts, you know, set up the backup or something and then you can just go I've done that now what's next and then because there is so much to do and so so much to think about but I think one yeah. of the earliest parts of content we call it the boring stuff because it really is boring sorting out I mean I, I've been geeky about running businesses when I was a kid I had like pretend businesses you know I, I love the whole aspect of it but yes it's boring getting insurance getting contracts sorting out backup blah 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 blah, blah. you know privacy policies all that um that's not what, what we go into business for so we call it that and we're like just get this done get it mm -hmm. off your list get it out of the way then it's going to get fun then it's going to get really interesting. It's going to be about you. The beginning is just about what everybody needs to do and everybody's the same. And lots of people will come in and they'll already have done that, in which case the first bit is like tick. Yeah. <laughs> really easy. 
yeah we definitely um, with you know we had people on the course before where they've had a business maybe they had um, or have a wedding photography business mm -hmm. or they run a different kind of business or they run a lifestyle photography business before so a lot of that stuff is done but also sometimes it's like someone could be um charging not enough uh, but charging for their services but they haven't actually considered a lot of things mm -hmm. uh, and we kind of make you pause and go back to basics which can be really really important um yeah. so it's for people who are thinking about starting and need to figure out kind of is it the right thing for them there's, there's loads of loads of stuff on you know the psychology of running a business and personality types as well um people who are absolutely ready to start now people who are up and running for a little while and need to do a lot of work on certain aspects and yeah people who are a bit further along but need some specific help or need to just go back and check those basics are there um and I think it doesn't matter where you're at in terms of the group. We talked about that nice group feel and that accountability. Because um, when you're all doing the same piece of work or checking on each other, oh, have you done this yet? Looking at each other's, whether it's a pricing structure or a brochure, um, it's a nice level, though, isn't it? Hmm. So one of the things that um, we got asked to talk about um, to somebody, pass and find the wording, um, I've completely lost the wording but it was basically the fear of starting a business that stage where you're thinking okay I maybe you're thinking I love photography I love photos I love people I like taking photos of people I'm not happy with this whatever it is whether it's your job or something but it's really really scary the thought of starting a business you should I guess talk about that a little bit because it is scary isn't it super scary I know for me I was at ground zero when like taking the course with you guys, like I had nothing. Um, I think my husband is smart and he made me, because I was trying to figure out, um, you know, like just how to maybe start a business at some point. So he kept telling me like, okay, you need to like track your expenses track what you're buying i mean basically it was all it was no, no income anything it was just like all how much am i spending so luckily <laughs> i had some so luckily i had some of that already tracked but otherwise i had like nothing so that's why this course was super ideal for me because it was just okay oh yeah i need some insurance so yeah those contracts people actually need to like fill those out and things and then going and it's super scary but then it's like it's almost you guys you you built it in such a way that it's it's scary to think of the whole but then like each each couple of weeks it's like no okay we're focusing on this and then we're focusing on this and then we're moving and hey if you're not done with this yet that's okay we can still talk about it later or now and I don't know it wasn't it wasn't intimidating or scary at all along the course it was just like okay no this is just the next step this is what you're doing it wasn't so like overwhelming mm. so it's that overwhelm it. which brings fear <laughs> where you're not sure what to do first or next not sure whether you've done something enough and you mentioned how we say the phrase done is better than perfect anyone on the course i don't know whether you want to play a drinking game <laughs> when we say that or just we should get tattoos or t-shirts at least we do say it all the time we talk about iteration a lot so just get something done then iterate it come back to it you'll be like you'll be working on your branding your website your marketing constantly that's part of the lesson that you you don't just do it and never do it again and spend 95 percent of your time taking and editing photos um so yeah there's things that you you you'll have to work on constantly in iterations and massive parts mm. but i think another thing with fear is that um it is i think this um kind of mindset in terms of what if people don't like what i do uh, and it's a, that fear of judgment mm. a from potential people who might or might not hire you and that as if it's reflection of your um, worth as a photographer or your talent and also the fear of what was my friends and family going to think? Am I going to think I'm too full of myself? Are they going to think I'm like charging so much that it's ridiculous? I'll tell you now, like none of my friends <laughs> can afford me. None of my family can afford me. It's fine. 
that's not my client. Do you so, really want to photograph them anyway? <laughs> I photograph my best friends and I don't ask for anything because I think it's cool. Um, but um, other than that, I don't care. But there's definitely that fear of like, what is everyone going to think about me mm. if I start this? And I've put myself out there for everyone to see and ask for money for this. So that's um, definitely something that can be scary and you can work on that. But also, like, just I would say, just do it. Don't think about what people think about you. You want to do it. You do it. Yeah. Um, I think it's Alice, really, you, oops, sorry. I was just going to quick say, it's like rooted in a fear of failure, isn't it? Yeah. But the fear of failure, when you think about connecting that to not having even tried to achieve something, and you think about how that's a bigger failure, if you just kind of have a word with yourself about what you're really scared of, I, I get scared of failure all the time, but I do acknowledge that I'm I'm more scared of not even trying. I'm, I'm more cross with myself if I haven't even had a go. So that can sometimes help get yourself sort of over that line. Sorry. I think sometimes as well that fear can sort of like power you through, can't it? Because yeah. um, it, with my, my my graphic design business that I also have, um, I still, 15 years on now, still think, People are like still asking me to do this, you know. <laughs> you know, I still don't feel like um, I, I think that powers you through, and like it, it makes you work harder for it in a way. Mm. And um, it's almost like that fear, like becomes like a, a driver to just like get better, um, you know, improve, research, learn new things, and and it just sort of like for me. I kind of need that little little fear. Yeah. <laughs> I read somewhere, and I can't remember what the source is, but the chemical reaction in our body of fear and excitement is very, very similar. Mm. So sometimes we read it as fear, but actually it's excitement. And if you reframe that and go, I'm actually excited to do this, I'm excited to try it, Mm-hmm. so what if I fail maybe I succeed but actually you know fear of failure as Alice mentioned there's also fear of success and I actually struggle with that the fear of success like what what if I actually succeed and then everyone will see my work and oh my god um what um, then I have to like sort of perform to expectations of people all of a sudden <laughs> you know yeah. um that can be scary too but you just have to keep going I think the other thing that's that where the fear comes in is fear of all those bits of running a business like oh my god I've got to get so many clients I I have no idea how many I've got to get loads of clients I've got to get money from them I'm going to need to buy stuff how much money is it going to cost I don't know there's this it's scary where you don't know where you're at and you don't know what you've got to do so what this process will the place this process will get you to is where you know okay I need to earn this from this many people in this much time. It's going to take me this long to do this. I need to spend this much on this. I'm going to have this left over. You just, it's numbers. It's just like numbers and spreadsheets. And there's nothing emotional about that once you know the information. I think it's much more scary to not know, not have any idea what your budget is than to know what it is and know that that means you've got to get this many clients because it's not scary to think I've got to get four clients to pay for this thing Mm -hmm. um or maybe it's a little bit but compare that to the feeling of I don't know what I'm doing that's to me that's terrifying Um, no Alice you said I remember like towards the end-ish of our course you said to Nick and Nick and I have spoken about like both of us are actually introverts and Mm -hmm. it's like scary just putting ourselves out there That's and like what talking doing here. <laughs> you know <laughs> isn't that funny like why why are we here I don't know. I'm an introvert too, so. okay. I have to go and sit in a dark room afterwards <laughs> I'm gonna have to take a nap and lay down it's fine um no but you had said because um Nick you were saying like oh I'm just like I'm scared of you know what if what if people don't hire me or something and Alice and you were like Alice you said um something like well um what happens if you don't launch? I think that's what it was. It was like when you were launching, Nick, and you were like, I'm just really nervous about like the soft launch or launching. And, and yeah, Alice, we were like, what, what happens if you don't launch? And you're like, I don't have any clients. And you're like, do you have clients now? No. Okay. So you might as well just do it and then see what happens. Like there's really, there's no need 
you know, to just kind of like sit in the corner and be scared because you're just, you're making the same amount of money by <laughs> not launching and sitting there quiet or launching and nobody hiring you, but at least you tried. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's that feel the fear and do it anyway. Thing. And I'm yeah. the biggest wuss. I'm such a wuss. But um, I think that it's just the other side of having pushed yourself is so much more comfortable than sitting there in fear, not pushing yourself. It's just more comfortable yeah. and it brings results. Um, and I think the other thing I want to say about putting yourself out there and everything that goes with that, like whether your friends are going to see you launch a business that maybe doesn't um, go. Like I, I used to be really worried about appearing to be on social media at prime time Saturday morning shoot time in case my friends thought I didn't have a booking. <laughs> you know, that was one of the things I was really nervous about. People don't care. No one sees their own you. lives to think about. They've got all their own neuroses to go over and over in their own heads. They're not looking at you and what you're doing half as much as you think yeah. they are. Absolutely. It's they like are, wearing a bathing suit. It's like wearing a bathing suit in public. <laughs> yeah. Nobody really cares what you look like. No. <laughs> They're worried about what they look like. So yeah. you can just wear whatever the hell you want to. Exactly. So do your business however you want to. Nobody cares. Yeah. I just want to read a couple of comments. So Charlene is saying, um, uh, so true my husband was mortified by my pricing but he's not my ideal client so we've talked a lot about that um and then Elika is saying hi oh, yeah. <laughs> so Elika was on our last run as well Elika's from Estonia and she's done uh, really cool stuff as well yeah um, as she launched so go check check her work out uh, go mm -hmm. check her yeah. work out Elika had really amazing work and great exhibition. I'm losing all the comments. I can't oh, the Facebook is doing something really funny where I have to click back to live chat all the time. So yeah, that's why I'm not. Oh, like, thank you. There we go. Thanks. <laughs> I'm going in and out a lot of time. Yeah. Um, so, but actually, now that we're talking about that, another question that we had was um, you know, running a business, a documentary family photography business in a country. Mm -hmm. where documentary family photography is unknown and that's was Elika's situation exactly where she's like I don't know anyone else <laughs> who does that yeah. Elika, so I can't remember if you mentioned Elika's in Estonia yeah yeah um, um so we, we we've had people from Estonia we had someone from Italy as well didn't we yeah um where it's kind of like we always say how the states where Sarah is from are uh, kind of like it's early early <laughs> it, and it's really early yeah. I was like thank you for coming at 7 a.m <laughs> um, um, Australia Australia um, yeah. yeah but I mean like in the states you kind of start trends or not trends things often first become popular in America then they kind of transition over to Australia UK and Europe often trails behind um <laughs> well that's the wrong way to put it but it seems to be in photography related like that but the advantage of being the first one to do this in your country is that then you become market leader mm -hmm. you're the, if you're the only one in a small country or in your town in your city offering this kind of service means that people really want it will come to you and it'll be a no-brainer there's no competition but <laughs> So just turning like, um, like a, a weakness into an opportunity. Okay, yeah. We get really geeky. We do SWOT analysis in the course as well. Then we're looking at all the things in the context of your business that can impact on it, whether it's a strength, weakness, opportunity or threat and turning that around into things you can actually go and do yourself. Push your business forward. I was just going to say with being like the, the leading person to go to like in Estonia, I'm in Wisconsin and it's not, it's not like crazy people know exactly. I think there's within two hours of me, I think there's two people that do documentary family. So in my town of just like 30,000 people, there's nobody. And so the, pro not problem, but like the challenge that I've come across is to educate people on what mm -hmm. it is. And that's, it's kind of fun because people are like, oh, wait, what, this is a thing. And it's like, yeah, it's a thing and I can do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I mean, same with, you know, I mean, not, not as similar as like a whole country, but it also can be challenging in a smaller town 
where you don't have that knowledge yet either. Mm -hmm. So if there's another person down the road doing the same thing, how do you differentiate what makes you you? Um, and I think one thing that's nice is we, we take everybody's individual circumstances into account. Um, and sometimes we go, we go away and do a little bit of extra research on particular countries and and it's not just one size fits all for everybody, is it? No, for sure. And it may be, you know, the different, again, different circumstances where, you know, if someone needs to book 50 sessions a year from the get-go because that's the only income source, we might tailor advice to that and say, you know, might you might, you know, consider doing this, this, and this, as opposed to someone who um, can do a slow burn and kind of build up very slowly. It's all so different. Um, for everyone and we're definitely on hand it's not just like we we'll give you a download and go struggle on your own we're mm -hmm. actually talking and asking questions and thinking about it even between the zoom calls alice and i often will message each other what do you think like we should do what what do you think this person should do how can we research maybe we we'll help, can help them research their market it um, feels a bit I, like we've got sort of We've got our own businesses, we've got Mave Documentary, and then it, it genuinely feels like we've got 12 other businesses <laughs> that we care about and that we yeah. feel we are working on and yeah. <laughs> we want to, you know, make successful and get right. Um and yeah, everyone's at different places and make and we do we do push, don't we, and challenge with things like pricing. Um yeah, we call it the big scary number, don't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we That's did because we know how scary it is. We had some people say um, it would be good to talk about pricing. So I guess we could move on to that now. Yeah. yeah. So um, pricing structures, um, what else? Pricing, asking people to compensate appropriately for my skills and time. Um, or like even photographing what makes me money as opposed to what excites me. That kind of is related a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we have how many, we have like whole three modules, right? That's sort of related to pricing. Um, <coughs> start with uh, running your numbers, which is what Sarah was talking about earlier, where you kind of take and track every little thing, every little Lightroom preset, a photography bag, website domain, <laughs> books, courses that you purchase and you figure out how much it actually costs you to run a business. Um, and it's often more, I mean, for people that don't track it already, which is, you know, I think most people, it, there's more more going out than you think there is. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll get you to the point where you have budgets for it all. Yeah. It's just it takes I, the away. I, I have never tracked anything with my business in 15 years. And I've totally reevaluated everything now. <laughs> and I've got the spreadsheets. And I, I, I've got such a, I, I can just pinpoint, you know, how much I'm spending. It's just brilliant. The pricing thing is just, it's just incredible. Like um, the, the way that you do it is completely tailored to each individual person. And you have your own numbers. <laughs> and then once you've got, once you've done all this work, you can't really argue with those numbers. Yes. <laughs> those numbers make sense. Numbers and don't lie. Numbers it, don't it, lie. Um, the numbers don't lie, and, it, and then it makes you um, sort of committed to those numbers then, because they come from a place of sort of research and, and sort of... Uh, they literally come from a calculator. Yeah. There's no so, emotion. You uh, might have fear in response to seeing what numbers on the calculator with the spreadsheet, but there's no, nothing emotional in the process that's led to that number. You put data in how much time you've got, how much things cost you, how much, you know, how, how long your work's going to take you. And it just spits this out at you. <laughs> and you have to just face it. And then... I often relate it to fear, like there's always that fear about, you know, I'm not sure I'm worth charging this much. What like, is my photography good enough? Weirdly, that often comes with people who are the most talented. Um, oh, there's always yeah. that, you know, yeah. oh my God, I'm not so good. We're like, seriously? Uh, but 
that number that you come up with after doing all your research and, and figuring out how much you need to pay yourself, how much your business costs to run, you know, how many sessions can you actually take a year yeah. all considered? Are you a parent? Are you a single person that can dedicate like 24 seven, not that, um, but more time to shooting. And then that number comes up and it's, it, there's nothing emotional about it. Um, mm -hmm. We and then it it's just a question of kind of I, I need to go I have I need to go and do it and mm -hmm. there's no worth like feeling a worth attached to it we have we have some break weeks in the course don't we and one of the break weeks is I mean if the timing works out we kind of slightly design around half terms and things but so to allow for you to sort of sit staring at a wall going <laughs> right <laughs> Um, and then we we totally just like grab your hand at that point and hold it until you're like right okay fine <laughs> Let's do it. Um, but yeah again once you get to that point that fear goes and you're like right let's get on with business and you start your head starts to change and you're ready even if you've already been running a business for a few years and you're here because something isn't quite working as well as you want it to you go back and redo that and you've got this new foundation to do everything else, to iterate everything else that's in place. Um, yeah, I was going to say, so we call it this financial exposure triangle, which um, we kind of came up with because we're so used to when we, which we're probably a bit more confident about sometimes, putting, managing sort of different data points. You manage your IC, you manage your aperture, you manage your speed, the light. And we're really good at that. We know how to get a result based on, um, if we change one thing, we have to change another thing. So the way we do the running the numbers bit of the course is we look at the different things you have to balance. Um, we focus on how you keep those in balance to get a, a number that makes sense. So for example, if you say, well, I'm, I'm gonna double the amount of time I've got. I'm gonna, um, whether it's putting your kids in nursery or um, leaving or going from full-time to part-time in a job, I'm gonna double the amount of time I've got. What impact does that have on the number that you then use to base your pricing on? Maybe you say, I'm, I'm actually going to have to double my cost because I didn't think about it. Suddenly I've got to buy insurance, never did that before. I've got to buy contracts. I've got to buy samples. And actually I'm using like a baby camera. I need a proper one. I haven't got a proper computer. And um, that number's changed. So then you think, well, that's going to have to change the number that you base your pricing on. So it's not just what do you want to charge? It's what data do you put into this spreadsheet, which will tell you what you need to be coming home with on average. And then the other thing we do is we, we step back and look at the whole year, don't we? Mm -hmm. Not living month on month. It's looking at the whole year. Yeah, because things happen and you need to take time off. And that there are quieter periods in the year, geography wise. Um, and you don't want to be working every weekend either. So you can't go and say, I'm going to book four sessions a month every month. It's not going to happen like that. It's more likely that you will book. You, you need to look at like, okay, I need 30 sessions a year. And some months I'll only have one. And another month I'll be shooting every weekend. Um, so definitely, that's the, look, yeah. That's the, the biggest mistake I made when I started up. Um, I was really, I thought I'd done a great job of organising my spreadsheets and planning it all out and everything. And I completely didn't think about the fact that in January and February, people don't generally want more photo sessions than in the summer. <laughs> Usually, it depends what country you're in, what the season is. But in winter, it's, it's, it's like a trough. And in the newborn studio photography market, I think September is always a bump everywhere, but generally it's even. But um documentary is not like lifestyle where you need a blossom tree or some like orange leaves falling but there is a seasonality to it so taking the year as a whole means that you just have a lot more control over managing the sort of ebb and flow and going with it a lot more um and again it takes that fear away because you just know you know what's going on <laughs> that's magic word spreadsheets so who likes spreadsheets? <laughs> I hate spreadsheets, I'll tell you that, but they're a tool, right? So as much as I hate them, I use Betsy them. doesn't lie. <laughs> I don't like creating them. I like plugging in the numbers because yes. oh, I, I think that's fun. Yeah. 
when my it's all been done for you. Them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I love creating them and I've created three, I think it's three for the course. And what's what I really want everybody to understand about them is that you don't need to know how to create spreadsheets to use them, do you? It's just like all the fancy stuff is done, go and use them. So yeah, you you quite like them, don't you, Sarah? I do. I was so impressed. Well, so my so my husband is very, he loves spreadsheets. He's standing in front of me and doing stuff. So he's, but anyway, um, no, he loves spreadsheets and I, they're just not my jam to create them, but I love plugging in the numbers and then seeing how things like pan out and having it all like laid out. I do like that. So I was very, I loved that. And then what did, who called it like the mothership spreadsheet at the very end, <laughs> yeah, I think? Becca. I think it was spreadsheet yeah. mothership yeah spreadsheet mothership yeah so yeah. true <laughs> so, the, so we've created one that basically will like spit out this number which you base your pricing on and then um we've created another one which is we've got the revenue insight spreadsheet which is really good if you offer one more one more than one type of service maybe you're offering headshots commercial work and nursery work something i do a lot of um or maybe you're coming from the wedding photography world and I think what we see a lot, especially with people coming from the wedding world, is the pricing for family isn't quite right. Maybe you're thinking, well, it's a fraction of a day, you charge a fraction of the price, then you think, wonder why your revenue on overall isn't is down. So we have this spreadsheet which has pie charts in, which <laughs> you, you can use to You give it down. away, Alice. <laughs> Yeah, it, you break down the time cost and the revenue for the different types of service and it tells you whether or not they're in sync or not. Um, so that's a good one. But yeah, the mothership one is one that I developed for myself to use and I use it every single day. And it, it tells you on a daily basis whether you're on track or not. You can plot what work you aim to book in for the year, what costs you expect or anticipate to have for the year and what your budget is for learning and development. I, I spent a fortune on learning and development last year because I budgeted for it and it was all fine. You know, it's to compare that to how you feel at the beginning when like, oh, can I afford this course? And actually you can't afford not to do it, but you don't have a budget. So it's fearful and unknown. So this spreadsheet tells me where I'm at every single day. And I just need to put a few numbers in because it all does it for you. And um, if you don't want to use it, that's absolutely fine. It's one of those things that if you think you, you can and you, you get a lot out of it, then hopefully it's making a big difference. Um, I just want to read a comment from Nicole. Um, she says, I love hearing that I'm not alone in my fears. I'm very introverted and this is scary. Mm -hmm. But from hearing you all, I'm realizing that maybe I'll never feel completely ready. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, you, you never are. feel ready though. Like I often feel don't ready, like when I do new things and I've been doing this for a very long time now. Um, when I try something new. I think it's like having kids. So many people in this business have had kids because yeah. that's kind of where you get that eye from, isn't it? You know? No, no, if you wait till you're ready to have kids, like you'll the, never have you kids. Know, the human you'll race will just grind to a halt. <laughs> and then you realize that it was fine because you don't get ready until you've got them. Nobody can prepare you for having kids apart from your actual own kids. You are different to the other person's kids who told you, oh, it's going to be like this. So you sometimes need to just take that leap, start your business, and then you learn how to kind of like swim or fly or whatever it is. Um, yeah, I like ready. to put myself in situations where I can't get out of them. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, I am really introverted, and I just you know, but I just like to think that right, I'm going to do this, and I'm doing it for my business, and I need to be friendly, and <laughs> I, need to, <laughs> I need to put on my extroverted face. Yeah, I need to be extroverted for two hours. <laughs> all for a good cause and then, and then I'm fine you know and it's and it's sort of like it's your little buzz really you kind of you just have to kind of do these things and and just sort of what's the alternative really just yeah. don't do it and then you regret it's, it it's like with marketing that's the bit where you've got to put yourself out there but if you know how to do it and the way in which you're going to do it and when you're going to do it you can then sit in a room on your own in the dark, scheduling things you've written on your own in a room in the dark. <laughs> and then your systems just put these things out there for you. And you can, you can kind of do that. Um, you don't have to be as extroverted as you might think. 
to... Although we do encourage everyone to kind of like um, challenge themselves. And we talk a lot about, you know, if we're introverted, there is that temptation to kind of just, just um, stick with like Instagram and Facebook marketing and maybe blog a couple of times. But actually, there is huge value in challenging yourself and stepping over fear and putting yourself out there in the community, networking, which sounds like such a scary word, um, going like, you know, putting, going to fairs or, or just, just talking to people on a playground. Um, I definitely feel like, Nick, I have a similar strategy to Nick's where I say yes before I had a chance to overthink it. Because yeah, if I overthink it, that's it. That's not. You not do that happen. for us together quite a lot, don't you? And I'm like, <laughs> right. I say yes do for me to documentary a lot. It was like, yes, we're going to do that, and they're like, oh my god, are you serious with us? But it's um, yeah. it's good. I tend to say yes and just worry about it later. You you get through it. You'll you'll do it. You'll you'll manage it, and then. So um, you were talking earlier, Nick, about the spare that you did, or a. Um, a carnival or yeah there was a there's, there's a there's a part in the course talking about branding uh marketing sorry and um obviously promoting yourself in person because people just they do like to know you don't they you mm -hmm. are going to do the shoots you're going to be there in somebody's home it is really important so i signed up for this um in in york there is a a company called mumbler which is like this company that um they advertise like kids events and things like that. And they put on this festival and you could get a trade stall. And I just, I, I quickly sent the email and I paid for this stall. <laughs> and then I was like, what am I doing? You know? um, but yeah, I, I did this festival and it was sort of three hours. There was loads of families there, met, met loads of people. I took Polaroids of families as a giveaway and just introduced my business. And I, I really enjoyed it. Like I needed to like rest afterwards, but um, it's something I never would have done. You, you know, I, going, I, I think I, I signed up for it when I was doing the course. Mm. And when it came to doing it, it was only a few weeks ago. And I thought, what, what was I thinking? <laughs> You know, but I was in that mindset where I like, get things done, you know, this is, this is going to be a really great marketing opportunity. And it really was, but I, I wouldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. But now I've done one of them. I'll do it again because I've got all the things I need to do it. It's so annual. I got some merchandise made and, you know, I got my leaflets done. And um, it's it annual. annual yeah. Nick? So I'll do it again next year. But have you the, signed up already for next year? Uh, no, no, not yet. I am doing it. I am Would you doing like to do it next year? Yes, I'm going to do it. It was definitely worthwhile. Are you going to? Yes. When? When do you think you might email them to say you want to do it next year? <laughs> you want me to do it now after don't. this Zoom call? <laughs> yeah. This is very after much this slide, like yeah. this is very much like the way it goes on on Zoom calls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it but there's, there's another one in September that I've signed up to do well uh, and then I, I found another one at, at Christmas <laughs> that thought would be good so now I've done it once I just think yeah you know it was full on like because mm. it, it was my partner came with me um just to manage you know there was actually a queue of people at one point and I was like and he was like managing okay. the queue, telling them all about family documentaries. <laughs> Brilliant. Amazing. So if you commit to yourself to doing three a year and you know how many clients you need a year, you think how many inquiries are you likely to get from each of these? And you have in your head a number like I'm going to book like two bookings from each of these or three bookings from each of these. That could be like 20 percent, 25, 30 percent of your target bookings for a year just from yeah. these things but also just you... growing your emailing list that we talked about like it's sometimes yeah. you might not get an immediate booking at the event but if you um have a, a, a tool for them to sign up to your mailing list which you've done nick um then you have the way to keep marketing to those people because they've already they're kind of warm they're warm leads and you just keep yeah. marketing to them mm -hmm. uh, and That's eventually funny. it might take a year it might take two wow. years for them to kind of cross over that line but they will you know they're much more likely to book. That was my aim, just to build the, the, the mailing list because I had one person on, on the list. <laughs> uh, 
Before was it you? Was it you? This was only a few weeks ago. I had one person who, who organically signed up from the website. And, and uh, you know, when that one person signed up, I was like, somebody's on the mailing list, you know. It's exciting, <laughs> though, isn't it? And it I've is. got quite a few on that list. And uh, I also got chatting to three or four people who were really genuinely interested in booking and interested in the documentary genre. Mm. And it just gave me that, it gave me that confidence that I will do that again. But that is something that I would not have signed up for without the course. Um, well so it does throw you into doing things that you didn't <laughs> want. In but a you threw way. yourself well, into that. You put yourself over that line all by yourself, yeah. And Sarah, you've been putting yourself out there left, right, and centre. Well, I was just, I was just gonna say, <laughs> with Nick now, with the course, like she talked about that, and I was like, I could do that. Like I can copy her idea. I mean, you're in, you're in York. I'm in Wisconsin. Like who cares? That's my husband. <laughs> okay, bye, honey. <laughs> but yeah, because I there were there are some like fairs and festivals and things here. And I'm like, oh, I could get one of those little Polaroids and like do it too. That sounds like fun. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Well, you've been doing loads and loads of like social media marketing, haven't you? Yeah, I've actually not done a very good job in the last like week or two with children and whatnot and summer and things. I actually have, I have a list of things I need to get done in the next like two days before we go um, on a trip. But yeah, that's um, that was that's been working pretty well. Just because I had said earlier, just kind of like educating people on what family family documentary photography is. It's been kind of a nice way to show people, like, hey, this is this is what I'm talking about. This is what you need because I'm telling you, you need it. <laughs> I think what's Moms been so lovely to see is that your your brand voice has been incredibly strong in all of that because you've done so much work on that and you're such talking about like how we also need to build on our own strengths you're such a good writer and that's you... so funny I don't think I am but I like I okay thanks <laughs> <laughs> you are we'll go with I think that you're a very authentic writer oh so you're the way you nail your brand voice in writing is is really good and effective so when awesome. I read stuff that when I read the stuff you write next to seeing your pictures I'm in straight away I'm like oh Wisconsin's not too far maybe to go for a shoot because I'm you it's get so me pretty. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I know you, so you know you know what you want to say who you want to say it to and you're saying it in a really good way in a really authentic way which is essentially the marketing family documentary photography is essentially storytelling which is what we're doing in the first place so actually, if we tap into the mindset and skill set that we use as photographers, more often than not, I think we can find find the right medium, whether it's writing, talking, whatever, standing on a stall. You find this innate ability to just do it because we're all storytellers. And it's been wonderful to see all your, your marketing out there. And I know you've had a lot of success with it, haven't you? You've had all kinds of had lots of bookings in your it went yeah I did a soft launch um meaning like um I'm giving people like half off products and things for the summer so that started in June June 1st I like woohoo I'm opening up bookings so I think like three weeks before that I I got my my Facebook page going and my website up and running and I was like okay and then like basically every day up to the soft launch, I was like, okay, these are things you need to know about documentary photography and here's some looks and hey, moms, get in the photos and um, you know, kids crying is still part of your day and that's cool. Like, I don't know, my kids are screaming half the time anyway. Um, <laughs> but that's like, that's what you're in right now. You know, I mean, and, and I say all the time that I have like a horrible memory and for me, that's why I got started doing this is because I can't remember like that first year of life. It's just crap for kids. I mean, you can't remember anything. You're sleep deprived. But those are some very like crucial things that you should have photographed. And I don't know. It's oh, so yeah. Anyway. Um, so anyway, I, I did all that building up to June 1st. And then I said, OK, I'm going to set up bookings 
And what I did for myself is I laid out a calendar. I have a desk, like big calendar. And I went through the dates that I wanted to book, not like, Hey, everybody pick a date. I was like, Nope, these are the days that I'm free. Let me put them out there for people, you know, saying like, and plus, you know, it's the summer we're busy. So I, we have weekends that I can't do anything. Um, so it was like, nope, I'm free here. I'm free here. I'm not there. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Can't do that. But yeah, with my um, launch like that, the first like two days, I think I got like eight bookings for the summer. So that was awesome. I mean, unfortunately, yeah. one had to cancel for COVID. But anyway, <laughs> it is that's, what it is. That's, it's really, fine. Cool. that's yeah. really cool. And I definitely like I was watching you launch and writing all those posts as I was saying, like, it's really resonated. Um, and it's one of those things again like it's so scary to put yourself out there and keep showing up because you think oh people must be so sick of seeing me but actually people don't see everything that you post yeah mm -hmm. so you kind of have to keep going and knowing that people will see like 10 percent of what you post mm -hmm. um so like i'm always joking, like you have to be sick of yourself done yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then someone will see it like you you yeah. make yourself sick of like marketing yourself and then someone actually will see it <laughs> Elika's just and an even, angry staring with a step in, you are good. There you go. Oh, that's me. <laughs> She's probably tagged you. I just said your whole name. But, um, yeah. yeah, it sounds it, weird. You, you did all that work. And I think one of the things we really try and get across in the beginning is there's so much work to do behind the scenes that people don't see that. They just see this flurry of posts that totally they don't see all of it. They see some of it. Um, but the, the work behind the scenes is huge. And going back to financial planning and, and working at your numbers, we, we really work on that with capacity, don't we? So, mm -hmm. so that you ideally put yourself in a situation where you've got some time to do that. Instead of thinking, I've got no time for that. Make time, right? You're running a business. It's not, you can't just click your fingers and pause, like I said, you know, pause time to catch up. You've got to, uh, you've got to face up to the fact that running a business is back office as well as, Front and client, you know, client entry. You've got all this work to do behind the scenes. It takes a ton of time. You put so much work in, and you you got the results. Well done. What I love, you guys, um, kind of told us about this at the beginning of the course is just like the, um, like batch processing things, or not even mm -hmm. processing, but just like sitting down because I you need to be in the mindset to write things. You need to be in the mindset to do marketing or whatever. So it's like. I really, for some reason, I had never thought, oh, I should sit down and write five things out for the next, you know, like week or whatever for Facebook or whatnot. And then that's done. Then I don't have to do it every day. Or I need to go through my calendar, like, you know, Monday morning, do this and then blah, blah, blah. That was like, oh, yeah, it's my business. I can set this up. So it's like successful and like yeah. organized. Yeah, like organized. <laughs> For sure. I often, we actually came up in a conversation yesterday with someone that we are not we humans are not built for parallel processing we talk about it in the course that's why we encourage people to batch even your like computer if you have a bazillion things open your computer will slow down the human brain can't even do like a 10 tabs at the time um so you really need to focus on one thing at a time multitasking is so overrated and we are good at this as parents but it, it's not necessarily the best use of our resources you don't run your business like you parent it depends <laughs> i think i'm a bit better at one than the other most of the time i, use I mean i literally that. threw a bagel at my kids earlier <laughs> so they, <laughs> they're like we're hungry i'm like i'm out of cold take a bagel <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a comment from so Nicole Moss says it's been so fun watching you launch Sarah you make it look so easy um and Jennifer hi Jennifer says you I'm not going to do that you're are motivating thank you and we've got a question um from Magdalena do you use a CRM tool to manage clients that's customer record management tool um we we cover that don't we and we cover whether or not to use it and, I, yeah. and one of the one of the big things in the early stages is personality type and knowing yourself and being your own manager um Personally, I don't use one because I'm I'm all right with spreadsheets and I she, yeah because she uses spreadsheets. <laughs> and but if you are not that person, you'll know if you That's need me. one. Yeah, if so I use a CRM. One, 
Um, I use. Say it again. So we recommend light blue, and we yeah, we recommend light blue, and we have a discount um, just for students uh, if you're new to light blue to try it out. Um, but we have it, a discount for contracts as well. Um, yeah, UK-based contract company. We must say it's UK-based. Um, no, that's yeah. Which one is? I can't remember. No, let's not lie. Yes, UK-based. That's right. Sorry. Yes, and it can be adapted, but it's we can't. Yeah. We don't want to give the impression it's international when it's not. But yes, yeah, so we we recommend that if you need it, and with with lots of the things that's that's in the boring stuff unit <laughs> that we mentioned. Um, don't just think, oh, I don't. I'll do it later. You're going to make a. You're going to spend. Just get it spent in the beginning and get it set up. And the time it will take to get your, you know, your workflow embedded in something like that is. You do not have the time later on when you're spinning plates with 20 clients. Yeah, um, it's so easy when you have like a couple of clients. I remember when I first started, you remember everything. You remember at which stage every client is. Mm -hmm. um, it's so easy to keep track and not forget things. Once you mm -hmm. up and go in and there's marketing to do and there's shoots and clients and culling, mm -hmm. it's so easy to forget to email or like to, to know when you're supposed to deliver a gallery. So if uh, you're running a an inquiry, so easy to forget. If you're running a kitchen table hobby photography business on the side of kids and a job, then can I just do a shoot every other weekend? That's, That's not still a full time job every other yeah. weekend. Yeah. But you, you need to you need to put things in place that are scalable because that's not going to last. If you want it to be successful, it's not going to last. So the the fabric of your business, the infrastructure, everything from IT backup to the legal stuff, it's got to scale. There's no point setting yourself up to have to do it twice and spend money twice. Do it properly at the beginning. And it's more efficient financially, it's more efficient in terms of time as well. Hmm. So we recommend it for people that um, are going to benefit from having it, which is, yeah. I think, most people, I guess. Yeah, but we also have, we do have templates for like client tracking, don't we, mm. where like it's kind of like an easy, you can either use it to set up your CRM for that, or you can do sort of paper and Excel spreadsheet um, tool, like version of it, what Alice is using, and we can definitely chat through that. Um, yeah. I just want to mention quickly the other um, student discount we have at the moment is the next, you know, we talked about how you're, you're a designer as well. You got, I can't remember how many years. I don't want to make you older than you are. Uh, yes, yeah, loads of years. Old, like 20 years or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. It was a big number, yeah. Yeah, it's a long time. <laughs> so it was such a joy doing the branding part of the course with you there, because as a designer, you we, we all comment on each other's and we all bring our own strengths. I can always proofread everyone's grammar. Um, but you were there like, um, those colours or, you know, <laughs> offering some really great advice. And so we did some work behind the scenes, didn't we? And you yeah. put together these great packages of... Um, like brand design for photographers where you can, and do you want to explain it a bit more than me, a bit better than me? I found, not, myself, I, I found myself within the group really wanting to help people. <laughs> um, and obviously I'm limited on time, but um, I just felt like branding might be one of those things that is um, a good thing to outsource. It, it gives photographers one thing less to worry about. It might take you ages to figure out what kind of look you want to go for and yeah I just kind of like work with you and, and figure out the best way to reflect your work and a sort of brand look and feel to to go with it um because yeah that's what I do <laughs> you put um, packages together which are particularly tailored towards photographers and yeah. you just speak the same language and you know exactly what's in our heads so um then they're, they're live on your website but we also have an exclusive discount for alumni of the business of documentary course um, yes yeah just <laughs> exciting so I'm, I'm sure you'll get lots of people yeah you new facelift of the whole genre before we know it <laughs> <laughs> we've, have we got time to just cover one more area maybe that We've been asked about yeah That's sure good. and everyone who's watching feel free with so we had a couple of questions but if you have anything more for us or for our alumni about the course um feel free to ask um are you okay to stay for a few more minutes nick and sarah yeah yep yeah. yeah. um 
Shall we talk about juggling business and creativity and sort of personal yes. work? Yeah, That's that a, a, a big really thing, nice. isn't it? Yeah. And it's kind of related to this, um, you know, shooting what you love for money versus like mm-hmm. shooting something you don't love for money and then having yeah. time to do personal work. Yeah. So we had a couple of questions and yeah, there was there was one question. It was, how, yeah, how do you balance like shooting what you love versus shooting what earns you money? And I guess the first thing that we both thought and said straight away was, if you love documentary, you can earn money from a documentary. There is a market for it. There's a market for so many things. There's absolutely a market for this. And we can hold your hand through figuring all of that out for sure. Um, but then so, sort of thinking aside to things that you might want to that don't earn money such as you maybe want to do some charity work for free or you might want to do some travel photography have an extended holiday or do some personal projects like things that are close to your heart and um, if you do what we said earlier which is plan the year out as a whole you can totally take that sort of thing into account you can say well I want to take half of August off to travel to wherever to photograph sunsets or buildings or whatever and um, plan around that and go okay well that means I need to do I can do slightly fewer sheets a year so I need to earn a bit more from each one so I need to then adjust what I was thinking of pricing and charge a bit more so basically your clients are paying for you to do that which is exactly the same as anybody who works in employment in a big company who has a learning and development budget to go off and do courses or to go off and do strategy away days you're not plugged in like a robot eight hours a day, five days a week, but giving output to your company. You're receiving, I'm not talking in a really corporate way. <laughs> so I listen to a former HR manager. I know. So yeah. That's like, but I, I like, love hearing you talk about it in this, in this way, because I think we don't think about it, especially like if you've never been in like formal corporate employment or it's been a while since so you kind of tend to forget those things. Mm. so I used to be in charge of learning and development for the company at one point and then there's a famous phrase that came out of Google which is 20% time it was almost a myth really that Google employees can have 20% time meaning you can spend the equivalent of one day a week learning you can like sit in a hammock in this cool office full of lego reading a book on coding because you will go back to your desk and you'll be a better coder even more interesting to your colleagues and ultimately Google will have better output at the end so it's a return on investment you have to make these decisions for yourself running a business and if you think you're going to be a better photographer in that moment where you're in front of a client because you've taken a week off and gone and done street photography or gone and done architectural photography or landscape photography or go shot for free for a charity or shot this interesting like Nick you follow <laughs> an old gentleman around you to him going bowling who's now your best mate that feeds your soul and I bet you're a better yeah. photographer in, for clients because of that yeah but it's really difficult isn't it when you've got your best to just actually forget that you you still need a holiday because you don't get okay you've got you know so many days holiday a year you don't have that you've got to actually give that to yourself you and need a holiday and you need you work-based um you need to like work based learning and development time so a holiday without your camera and maybe on a holiday with your camera if if you don't want it you want a bit of it you want a lot of it just put some numbers in the mother sheet spreadsheet <laughs> mothership spreadsheet and see what it says everybody's going to think I'm following somebody around oh sorry <laughs> come on don't explain talk about talk about it it's beautiful so cute <laughs> It's not got a restraining order, I don't think, is it? Yeah. No, no, no. It was, it was my friend, a school mum, and um, I'd gone round to take to do some uh, a portrait. Um, sorry, a portfolio shoot. Um, of her with her children, and then I met her next door neighbour. He was called Ron, and he said, "John, to take some pictures of me." <laughs> So I arranged to go to the time, took some took some portraits of him in his house, ended up sort of um, starting to document him going to this bowling club with his friends, and it's become a project. Uh, that's the explanation. I'm not following somebody around. 
um but that that is that's one of my projects and that's one of my off days I might go down the bowling club and do a bit of sort of documenting and they just let me in now <laughs> just like yeah oh she's here again um, and they're all like oh make sure you get my good side and it's, oh, it's they're all quite elderly aren't they they're like in their yeah. 80s or something that's really they're all sort of like um in 80s 90s um and they just go there to sort of like have a conversation it's like a it's like a family really oh it sounds lovely so I think that yeah. I mean, lots of us that are just thinking I would love to do personal projects but I haven't got time because I've got my parenting responsibilities and I've got my job you can make time you just have to make the numbers work and that's how you can I mean the work-life balance we do say it's a bit of a myth really it's all about a blend and an attempt to get some kind of balance but it all just starts with doing a bit of planning and sort of forward thinking. And how lovely to sit at your desk busily editing, culling and culling and culling, knowing that in three months you've got um, you've got two days off to go and hang out at um, the old people's home for their summer party, whatever it is, you know. Exactly. Yeah, definitely, it makes us definitely better for our clients. It's so important as a creative business owner. Yeah. to be able to go away and do something that maybe you're not necessarily related to people or like just do something wacky with like creative way work with I don't know old photographs or photographing graphs or I don't know it's just like it sitting at a desk in an office and you know, when you work with someone thinking we've got a team away day in a couple of weeks we all get the day off and we go to that theme park which genuinely happens in offices up and down the country um it's like we've got our we had our alumni um visit to um the Vivian Meyer gallery recently that I was looking forward to that but a because we planned it before we even told anyone I know sorry, sorry. Sarah. <laughs> we're going to be gone to the gallery one day but that just knowing that was in the diary that's a great thing to look forward to and we hope to do many more of those with our alumni and um yeah we should probably wrap up now yeah if you've got any I think we covered most of what um so we didn't get to everything most of what people sent us to yeah and if uh, things come up if you're watching this on replay um, and things come up do ask us um just to mention that we have uh the enrollment to the business of documentary is open now we only have four seats left on this run um we have an amazing group of super talented photographers from everywhere really yeah, <laughs> like we nice have us we have uk we have europe um i don't have australia yet <laughs> No. <laughs> um and so if you want to sign up the link is on you just go to our website madefordocumentary.com and you'll find um links to that if you have any questions ask us if you we want start to on the little... first uh, on the 5th of september yes back to school time back to school time so kids are safely at school for most of you um <laughs> yeah and if you want to have a little chat um just about because a bit more detail about you and where you're at and whether it's a good fit for you just get in touch and we can do it because we you know we we will tell you if it's not for you for sure yeah. um we have a, a really great group and we um love to chat to people who you know get a lot out of it so you can do that as for well. sure any parting thoughts nick and sarah i don't know who it wouldn't be for honestly that's what i was <laughs> when you were just saying like <sighs> oh it might not be for you like I don't really I don't know who it wouldn't be for I will talk you guys up forever because I got my huge binder I can reference and yeah that's all I got <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you well um you. yeah I do miss it I miss it but I'm looking forward to the next one and meeting everyone and getting to know everybody yeah. um thinking about your businesses like 24 7 as well <laughs> All right, so I'm going to stop uh, the stream right now. Just give me one second.